Hello and welcome to the Nobody's Watching Wrestling Podcast. I'm doing a dance. She's she's doing a dance. I'll insert our theme music here. I don't know why. I'm so I was gonna say so it looks like you're dancing to something. But they can't see you. They no. just can't. Um, we usually talk about uh, important wrestling topics, but they're never important because nothing is. Uh, so we decided to skip even pretending, and we're just going to talk about uh, this most recent season of Glow, which is one of the more important things that happened to me over the month. I don't know about the rest I think of you. So. I think it's one of the more important things that happened in wrestling over the month. Yeah, not a lot was going on that was more important than this season of Glow. Uh, so we're here wow. to talk about what matters. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a Patreon and you should give money to it. Oh, we would love if you would give money to our Patreon. There is a link below. Uh, you can buy yourself an audio message from the nobodies. We'll say, uh, whatever you want within reason. Uh, we could, uh, record a happy birthday song. Or uh, tell your friend that they look nice. We won't well, record. Uh, we're joined by our special guest, my new dog, Jason Jr. Uh, I'll you record a message him, with Jason. You might hear him a little clip clapping around. He's clip clapping around. Yeah, uh, only because we put him in the cutest heels. Yeah, he's <laughs> really clap, taken to them though. He's doing very well. Yeah, he can sissy that walk. Work that runway. Yes, uh, drag dog. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's get into Glow. Oh, wait, when what? we have shows, also. Oh, uh, September 12th at Brooklyn Bazaar is the finale oh of... Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. ...the Mix Nobody pageant. I'm stressed out about it. Um, but you're not stressed out about it, you're excited to come see it. And then, the very next night, September 13th, is Tasselmania 4, where we will be making a special appearance, uh... I'm judging a drag showdown. It's gonna be wild. It's Ms. Jade versus Nancy No Good. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Nancy No Good who was in the mix nobody. Yeah, that and time. I was like, how could anyone ever beat Miss Jade? And then Nancy No Good showed up and did an amazing Twin know. Peaks number, and now I'm like, oh. Obsessed. It's anybody's The children game. could come for the, the grown-ups. That's, uh, that's how it happens sometimes. The yeah. The Friday after that, we have Nope. At the vault. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> there so that'd, be, that'd be the 20th? The 20th, guess to be de determined. We're gonna figure all this shit out. So we got a lot happening. Do we so have other much. shows? Oh my god, now we're joined by Pippin, the other house dog. Oh, <laughs> dogs, do you have shows to promote? Or like a, a GoFundMe or something? Anything? Actually, JJ does have a GoFundMe. <laughs> oh, that Jesus. was a good transition. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll get into it. JJ was found abandoned and he had a rough go and he needs some medical help. So if you want to donate, it's on my Twitter. I'll link to that below too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, give some money to a dog. They're generally more worthy than humans, I think. Yeah. And you have a brunch show every Sunday and also we have t-shirts for sale. Oh, yeah, links to all of this. All the things. Drag queen merch and terrier cult for t-shirts. I mean, if yeah. you're listening to this, this is September 1st. Uh, Erica Clash will be at brunch, so if you're waking up and you're in New York, you should come see Erica Clash. Right from, now. Right now. Keep listening to this, listen to it on the train, and then come to Drama Day Urban Tiki Bar and see Erica Clash from season two of Dragula. That yeah. would be fun. That'd be fun. It would be very fun to do. <laughs> it's just a fun thing. Just so much fun. We have more things for fun on board. We have a scent on Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Yeah. Yeah, oh god. Effie has a scent on Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab now. And also, if you say the nobodies that got the Renaissance in New York, you get 20% off. That's the last thing. And Halloween Adventure. Oh. Oh, 20% off. Halloween's coming up oh until September God. 12th, so you can get that discount. I need to go there, actually, before that. Yeah, me too. That's um, like, it sounds like I'm still doing the plug, but I actually am just telling myself I should go shopping there because yeah. we All right. a discount. Well, we will manage our own calendars later. Right now, <laughs> we are talking about Glue. Glue. Um, season 3. Uh, the consensus was it was good. It, it was good. good. We're in Vegas now, full time. We live full in time. Vegas. Gina Davis is our boss. Oh, oh, Gina Davis is everyone's boss. She walk her first scene. She walks in so unassuming, and they're, you're just like, oh, there's Gina Davis. Yeah, that's exactly. She's <laughs> like, it's not even. She's like very this, regal. Not even this big to do. It's just like Gina Davis walks into the lobby. I, yeah, she doesn't make a big deal about the fact that she's Gina Davis no. because she knows that you know. Yeah, yeah. She, we're all in agreement. She like as soon as she comes in, she's like, well, we're all in agreement that <laughs> I'm the best person in this room. Also, I'm Gina Davis. I'm Gina Davis, everyone. <laughs> Gina 
Davis. I would love it if they just reshot the show, but her only lines were, "I'm Gina Davis." <laughs> they just in the whole, <laughs> or like the like uh, uh, they're like talking Hello. about like uh, like we we really have to th- rethink like renewing our deal with you, and she just goes. Well, I'm Gina Davis. <laughs> and then they're like, good point. The show's renewed. Yeah. Or like, she comes on stage in her showgirl like outfit. She looked surprisingly. incredible in and, that. And uh, Kevin Cahoon. believe? Yeah. Kevin Cahoon just hands the mic over to her and she says, I am Gina Davis. And the crowd continues to go wild. It's Kevin Cahoon, who was, uh, when Hedwig was originally uh, at the Jane Street Theater back in the early 2000s, Kevin Cahoon was a Hedwig. It was a replacement Hedwig, yeah. Um, he was also. So a replacement Frankenfurter, Frankenfurter in a Rocky Horror Show. I actually mm-hmm. saw Kevin Cahoon live on stage as Frankenfurter. He's like non-binary or... then because he uh, goes both Rocky Horror and she's Hedwig. non-binary. <laughs> the two genders. The two genders. Yeah, he's she's non-binary. <laughs> or he's at le- he might be just like Hedwig for pay. There's no way of knowing. <laughs> like, <laughs> true, true. Well, let's we go right into. He his... seems like he would like Hedwig more than Rocky Horror. That's just a guess from looking at his face. I don't... <laughs> One of my favorite relationships that developed on that show this season was his and Sheila. Very cute. Oh, very, very cute. Great. Oh. In that first scene where uh, where she's at the drag show and he's trying to do the normal... The shtick. Fucking, mm. uh, fucking with the audience. Yeah, he was thing. reading. He was reading her... But then they looked at each other and they saw each other. I yeah. was like, whoa, something's going down with Sheila this season and I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. Their uh, characters interacting were cute. I I wondered what you... I had a lot of feelings about the whole plot of Bash seeing him and getting really uncomfortable and then we kind of I think we all need this, knew this was going to happen with Bash this season. Yeah. They mm-hmm. kind of alluded to it. Uh, I think the most... I think what was most heartbreaking is Kate Nash's character. What's her name in the show? Uh, d- I don't know, British. The librarian. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's really good. She's, she's wonderful. So good. I you know what I love what they're doing with her character is, you know, it mostly shows when they have a singer that they've cast. The, she's the a singer? Audience. Yeah. Kate Nash is... She came out around the same time as like Lily Allen of that school of like British she's like a Brit pop. pop girl. Oh, yeah, cute. but like really good, really smart lyrics. You'll have oh, to listen to her. I should go show. listen to her. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you'll remember. But I don't really what I like what they're doing with her is that she's like, they could have just automatically made her a singer. But instead, they're building the storyline, oh, I want to learn how to sing. Teach me how to sing. Even though we all know she knows how to sing. Well, not all of us, obviously. But, <laughs> uh, so I think that'll be fun because she's building up to it and not just like pretending and just right. like... Everybody's everybody's kind of building up to something in this season. The the before we move on from it because I still have so many thoughts about it. The drag queen thing. Mm-hmm. I felt like it was really interesting to watch that being in the wrestling world and seeing how like although there was this whole subplot about Bash like not being able to recognize he's gay, the way that he dismissed a drag queen on a wrestling show seems like a specific problem that I've run into where mm-hmm. they see like you two and they're just like, what do we do with you? Mm-hmm. And the reason they won't give it a shot is because they're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And even if that's not like overt, like because the person's gay, there's something about it that's making them comfortable that mm-hmm. then uncomfortable that's making them continuously not want to like take a risk on something. I like think that. it was, well, and also on the flip side, we have experienced with the drag queens like, I sell out the show every night. I can't get a bigger venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that was so venue. real. Us, yeah, that was it so still happens real. now. It happens to us. It happens to us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that they handled all of the drag stuff uh, very realistically. Yeah, um, I felt very much like I was watching a real thing happen. Yeah, to the point where I was surprised. Like he's re- like Kevin Cahoon is not professionally a drag queen. He's an actor who has just played a few uh, yeah. like gender fuck characters. I my only complaint was that they should have probably just hired a real drag queen. Yeah, but he was so incredible. But he's who a good cares? actor. Yeah, he, is he was amazing. A lot of drag queens are not good actors. It's true. And the other thing, but that there are plenty that yeah. are. Yeah. But the, also, what I noticed is that like he was doing a very vintage makeup style. It's true. And I wondered. I was like, I can think of a few drag queens who can act who would not want to look like he did. Yeah, yeah, because he looked like a drag queen from the 80s. Yeah, like, it just sure, wasn't yeah. a super glamorous thing, because yeah. that's just not how, like, that's not how they did the that's makeup. That's not what it looked like, not yeah. How they, make uh, they, did, they did a very realistic take on that, where, like, mm-hmm. 
yeah, his character illusions were fine, but yeah. like he wasn't like heavily contoured. He didn't block his eyebrows. Like he just was a, a a drag queen of the period. I felt like I could tell he wasn't a real drag queen though. Maybe Although, I mean maybe that's just me saying it after the fact, but I felt like I could tell. That's real. I mean, like there is a certain uh, he control like, of the room. Also, yeah, I mean he's also like a. The character's a drag queen in Vegas, which is a whole different beast, true. I'm sure. It's true. Yeah. That's true. But I, like, I see what you're saying, that, like, there is a certain stage presence that, yeah. like... He, he had the stage presence of, like, a cabaret person, mm -hmm. which, like, it is a subtle difference, but I maintain there is one. I, I, I believe you. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, we started talking about character journeys, because there are a lot of them. We have a uh, wolf lady uh, becoming... Kind of finding her own person, but also just finding ways to explore other avenues of who she could be. I thought there was something sort of melancholic about that, where yeah. like we're supposed to feel good that she learned how to dress like a, a normal human. And I was—I don't think it was about her dressing. I think it was about releasing this uh, facade. Definitely, but I—the weird implicit morality of that, of like conflating her... finding yourself with not dressing up. I thought well, it was weird. But still, when she was herself, she still had this dark, gothy eye makeup totally. and yeah. this bleach blonde hair, and it was like, and they went back into her past. I don't remember the specific. And um, talking about why she, she the, the wolf person came. Right. Right. You know. Uh, and there's also that way that like they they did they did the thing where she played Liza Minnelli in in that Rage. was incredible that was, that was great incredible but it, 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 it showed it, the versatility of that actress too she's so good and also good. gave a very like ghost world kind of approach where she's still trying on different personas true so like I don't think that they're trying to imply that she is settled on the person that she is at the end of the season but rather that she is going to continue to explore so, like she's in a midpoint where she has lost that facade but doesn't know. 100% what's underneath it. Like, she's still struggling with how to present to everyone else. True. Um, and so I, I'm very hopeful for a season four, and I'd like to see her journey be that. Did it not like, get renewed already? I literally never good. know. I don't know. I think it probably did. Um, I was sad there wasn't as much wrestling. There was a lot you less told wrestling. Me, you told me there. you read an article about why? Someone I did. It wasn't me. Oh. Never mind. There's some article out there about like explaining why there was res less wrestling this season, and oh. I didn't read it. I mean, I just know a, it exists. There's a lot of plot, and I think that like I understand why the first season, especially, like there was a lot of wrestling because they were right. literally showing them learning. But like I, there's a little bit of like it would be like if Orange is the Black just took a Orange is the New Black just took place mostly outside of the jail, where you're like. Wasn't this about a jail? I mean, this final <laughs> season does take place largely outside of yeah, the jail. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, and was really good. Um, oh, I haven't seen it. I, th I mean... <gasps> you know, I found out, I was listening to Betty Gilpin on La Culturista's podcast, and she was saying how she auditioned for Orange is New Black. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, for Piper. She oh, would have been really good at that. She would have been but, great. Yeah. No shade to Taylor Schilling. Yeah. yeah. Um... I did think the idea of staging a Christmas carol as a wrestling event is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my so life. So funny. And I was I wondering how you enjoyed Christmas. the Christmas. Episode. I actually thought it was completely genius. I like, I have never, like, I never would have ever thought to do, like, a stage play as a wrestling event. Although I know Mike Quackenbush at Jakara does Shakespeare in the ring. Ugh. Ugh. See, I mean, like, not to get into actual current events wrestling topics, but this... <laughs> does sort of touch on the whole, like, are wrestlers performance artists? Yeah. And that, like, the reason that that, categoriza like, that categorization works for wrestling is because you can do stuff like that to tell crazy stories or even, like, well-known stories right. through this medium. It's not mm -hmm. just a sport. It is very much a storytelling medium, and I think that was such a great way to explore that on the show. To be yeah. Like, it's and not sort just of, like, like, convince normal people who wouldn't see it that way. Yeah. That it could be like this. Yeah, that they are... If you had imagination. Yeah. I think, I think that also was 
in some ways a shorthand because they didn't do the thing of building wrestling stories throughout right, the season right, because right. they are because they're doing the, doing same, the same show, show every time. time. Yeah. So like they had to have some way to show that wrestling does have a plot. And that episode the where they all switched characters was oh, so funny. So cool. Also something that like a wrestling show for like an April Fool's show, everyone oh, should just switch characters. That would be so funny. I yeah, I had a blast with that. It again it showed everyone's range, all the characters could do each other really well. Yeah, yeah, Ever, yeah. Like, I just can't wait to see more of Kia Stevens in AEW. Oh! She, she's I such mean, a good actress. She was yeah. so incredible. She's I've, phenomenal. I fully oh. cried when they walked in on her and she was just crying in the back. Yeah. She couldn't move. That's yeah. real and I'm sure she's experienced Oh my god, I'm sure. Or at least had friends that have gone through this. I'm sure of it. And, like, although there was not as much wrestling, they, like, the two wrestling plots were her, like, mm-hmm. dealing with the breakdown of her body, and then the, um, the cute girl, fortune cookie girl, mm-hmm. like, dealing with Pay watching Meg. someone else play yeah. a racial stereotype. Yes, yeah, yes. And I thought they handled that incredibly well, too. Absolutely. Of like, it's like, she almost couldn't see how hideous it was until she watched a white person do it. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was so interesting. No, 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 they're around the campfire actually having like a, a conversation about all this shit and everybody's like kind of trauma comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love a good camp episode. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone was like, I think me and Tom were talking about this and he was like, he, I was like saying I didn't find that scene very realistic mm-hmm. and Tom was like, you've been to campfires with a bunch of queer people. All anyone ever does is cry and talk about their trauma around yeah. a campfire. And I was like, oh, good point. <laughs> no, I thought it was, I mean, in some ways it almost felt like, it did feel a little obvious. They're like, oh, we're going to give the characters a chance to talk about their trauma yeah. now. Like, everyone gets it out. Uh, which is like, you know, a good trope for many a show, especially yeah. a reality show, yeah. uh, but also a good drama. Um, I like a little capsule episode, like yeah. you said, too, of just, like, here's one side episode about, like, everyone's side plots. Get everyone out of there. Yeah, uh, I was... love that shit. I, like, uh, The Handmaid's Tale recently just did one episode that took entirely, took place entirely in a hospital room. Oh. And, like, it was, like, not in the outside world, and I was like, that's fascinating. Um, we have to talk about the lesbian storyline, too. Oh, mm. Right. Uh, I thought that journey was really interesting. It was. And she kind of had to go through it solo, and then... Uh, I'm hesitating even getting to the to the, to the the hate crime situation. Oh, mm-hmm. right. But it sometimes takes that moment for somebody to really, like, sink into their identity, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think... Yeah. I f- yeah. She looked... She finally saw what her partner was talking about. Yeah. I mean, I will say that I think the show condensed all homophobia into that one instance. Not that I want to see all of the characters have to deal with that constantly, but none of them has... Though they all talk about those experiences, no one ever... don't see it. No one ever has a negative experience about being gay. It is sort of... Like, it's in the periphery. It's definitely implied that Bash keeps his shit hidden because he knows that that's going to be a problem for him in life. Yeah. Um, like, that there is homophobia all around the edges of his story. Well, I yeah. think what also was interesting is uh, Betty Gilpin's character not even thinking about the consequences of going public with this secret fundraising event. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and just, like, she needed to do something, and she knew that this is the right thing to do, but also was kind of closeted about what she's yeah, doing yeah, yeah, as a yeah. producer. Mm-hmm. Um, but really into it and supportive, but kind of uh, just uh, just kind of like not aware of the consequences that could happen. It did make me think about how lucky we are. We've never been hate crimes like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like, it, it could so easily happen. I'm interested to see, and what's her character's name? Uh, the not so out lesbian character. Oh, I, the the turn down for what video girl? Oh, was that her? Was yeah, that her. Yes. <gasps> you I never meet? put two and two together. I have to go back and watch that. Yeah. that video is epic. I I remember a friend specific- of mine from college directed it. Oh my god, it's such a good video. Yeah. That's crazy. But like, I remember specifically. I've always remembered her face. So I was like, 
She's actually I'm like, who is this performer yeah. who's doing an yeah. amazing yeah. job? Yeah, she was really good. Every in that video. every one of her facial expressions is perfect. She's so. really good on. I mean, everyone. We just keep yeah. saying everyone's good because there isn't a single good. bad person. There everyone's wasn't anyone great. who I was like, I don't buy you. Yeah. I'm excited to see where her character goes because I I mean, that moment felt really realistic where she was like. Oh yeah. Do I choose this life, or do I keep living the life I've been living? Right. And I think for me personally, after Pulse happened, it changed my life and the way I wanted to present myself. That's and true. The way that uh, mm. you know, being a little bit louder, in my queerness, but also like this takes place in the 1980s. Right. But at the same time, we're kind of in that time again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's smart and topical. Um, what are, are there other characters we need to touch on? I mean, literally Most Ruth. of them. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Ruth. I, you know... She's the only character that had trouble growing and wasn't really sure where to go. My thing about Ruth is that she has a personality disorder. And, like, she just is sabotaging her life every single step of yeah. the way. Yeah. Every I... single big decision she makes, she makes the wrong decision that would like it's like so i it's it's interesting because they like show her i was talking to jordan about mm. this um they should they kind of make her like the hero of the show uh -huh. but she uh doesn't learn and grow mm. and also like every single decision she makes is so like lovelorn and like idealistic but in a completely self-sabotaging way so she the show kind of like she's sort of the hero, but like if you think about well, what she's like, doing, she's destroying her life mm. every single step. Yeah, of the it's way. well, it's like Taylor Schilling's character in Orange Is the Exactly, Black, it's like, I. It's exactly like that. Yeah, I think one of the problems with her lack of growth is that she is so close to achieving pretty much everything she wants. Yeah. She is the star of this show. She could have a relationship with Mark Maron if she wanted it. She Or but like also like don't get into that relationship. Like well, like don't get into a relationship with like an alcoholic with anger problems. That like, drug too. addiction. Like, she has a great boyfriend that she could Yeah, invest exactly. In. Like what are you doing? Like whatever she wants like she has all these options and she could be like if she wanted to push into being a writer, right. she probably could do it. If she and turns down like the biggest offer in the because finale. because she's following some ideal, and I feel like the show weirdly makes it look like she's being noble for doing that, but it's so fucked up. It's not noble. Yeah, yeah. And I think it. You don't think the 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 narrative of the show that was that she was doing something like following her heart or some bullshit. I no, uh, I kind of do. I mean, I, I definitely like I said. I, I think, do feel. F yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I mean, just again, like, I think she, well, the narrative is that she's so close to attaining her dream. She right. She hasn't achieved the dream she actually wants. But she literally could have at any point in this season. Yeah. Right. Like, that's why there's no growth is because she started off on the doorstep. She's so busy comparing herself to other people and not, like, actually seeing Look at how deep of all of these characters are that we There's can just so have. Well it's, developed. like, really true. I really was annoyed by that actress and that character in the first season, and mm -hmm. now yeah, the sure. more I watch it, the more I'm like, oh, she's supposed to be annoying. Yeah, Allison, <laughs> like, she's, yeah. she's really, she's really hitting Alison Brie. Yeah. She's really hitting the perfect note of, like, this, like, pathetic, cloying person who's still lovable in a lot of ways. Yeah. But, like, is deeply just, like, irritating. The the moments that she finds to make Ruth so incredibly likable yeah. seem are like must be very hard to earn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The, ca the character on the page. When she didn't make it back to that event mm. to do the scene with Sheila, I was like, you fucking asshole. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want to be doing is on stage right, acting. Right, right. But instead you're, ch you're gonna go to hook up with this dude that you don't even, yeah. And yeah. you're cheating on your boyfriend. Yeah. She's just really self-sabotaging. Mm -hmm. It's a, yeah, that, that's, I mean, it's not that it's not interesting to watch, but it's, it's probably the weakest link of the show in terms of plot points for me. I think it made sense. It, it definitely makes sense. sense, but yeah, I like, needed somebody that wasn't going anywhere necessarily, or just kind of going in circles while everybody else was Yeah, because like, people like that thing. don't grow up. Yeah. You know, like, like they, they really don't. Like, like the designer, they, like, you know, asked for a raise because she's right, creating right, these right. amazing outfits and Betty Gilpin's character is this crazy producer and then sweeps out a deal out right. from underneath her asshole boyfriend right. who charmed her and made her believe that like she was doing something. Right. 
But like, of course, the Ruth character couldn't grow because yeah. she's like <gasps> also has the moment disorder. with with uh, Betty Gilpin and Bash on the floor when he's like, oh, comes yeah, out yeah, yeah, to her, yeah, 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 and she just like melts. Yeah, was incredible. Yeah, that act. Who is that actor who plays Bash? He was on um, the Grey's Anatomy spinoff. Um, uh, what was it called? Uh, oh, like um, where she uh, the redhead moved to LA. He was like I know the title because my he mom was like the Office it. guy. Super was he hot. good in that? Yeah, he's good. He's a good actor. But like, who knew that he'd like be able to like do something like this? He's not gay in real life, mm -hmm. is he? No. Really? I can't remember who's with. He's with. I did else look this him. up on Wikipedia, and he was not. You know how you you do yeah. a little hack of scrolling down and see if they're listed as like LGBT American actor or something. Oh, I don't know. He is that. not listed. Yeah. I don't huh. think he is. That's. Uh, he's doing it very well. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's an incredible acting job and a yeah. lot to play with. And yeah. Like. <sighs> well, good for him. Because I could, I feel like I can usually sniff out a straight dude playing gay. I mean, he could be gay. He could just not be. The actor could just not be out. I don't know. Who knows? It's, it's true. That do, Yeah, it does happen. Actors still aren't coming out of the closet. Yeah. That's like a thing. Interesting. Lee Pace just had like a whole thing on the internet the other day about like saying something about his coming out and then I didn't click on the article. I oh. do this a lot. I read headlines and then not the actual article. Yeah, he was opinions anyway. not out for the longest fucking time. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, Ian McKellen, like, a little bit accidentally outed him. Yeah. Whoops. Um, Oops. He, like, he tried to cover his tracks, but also, everyone knew by that point. But also, like, and, like, I think, also, I don't think Ian McKellen, he's very old. He just, <laughs> like, I think he's just, like, forgets sometimes. He's yeah. just, like, I'm, at a, I'm a casual old man, and that name just slipped out of my mouth, and now I have to, like, backtrack, like... I, I don't think he was not being malicious. No, he's definitely not like a mean not. old queen. No, no, no! Don't say such things about not like Perez Hilton. Oh my yeah. God! Ian McKellen uh, just what else, uh, what else the... happened on this show? <laughs> oh yeah, Ian McKellen's not a lady wrestler. He could be if he wanted to. That'd be a really weird gimmick. <gasps> oh! If like Natalia came back, um, she was like, "I'm Ian McKellen. <laughs> That's my thing." Macho Picchu. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is leaving. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a... Not the cast, right? No. Well, we don't, know. we don't know. That's the thing, like, They're I, not writing that character I off. I hope not. She's I could great. See, I mean, I could she, see... That actress, also incredible. Really good. Cool. I could see them, like, doing, like, two or three episodes without her at the beginning of the season. Sure. And then, like, They don't need back. to, though. No, but I think that it would, like, raise the stakes. What's of, gonna like, happen is she's she... gonna go tour with her brother yeah. and realize how hard it is for a female out there yeah. in the circuit, yeah. especially in that time. But also, what if they recast her role? No, thank you. No, they won't. But I mean, like, in terms of, like, amping up the drama of the show, oh, oh, they oh, do oh, the oh, same oh, show oh. every week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and casting. Yeah, yeah, like, they yeah. did last for, with, uh, With Junk Chain. Junk yeah. Chain, yeah. Like, I think that the reality of the show is that they might have to bring in another cast member. And I liked that character sticking to her ideals and be like, I actually want to wrestle, wrestle, not yeah. do this stupid But I'm shit. wondering if they're moving out of Vegas for the next season, because What's-Her-Name just bought that TV station. I think so. Back. I think it That's won't true. take place in Vegas next That's season. That's true. But Vegas was interesting, and Good setting. what's going to happen to Gina Davis and our drag friend? I don't think we're going to see Oh, them no. They're, you think uh, they're done? Yeah. I mean, I don't. I bet you... Maybe like a guest, a cameo. Yeah. I like. I don't know if Gina needs the TV money. She's fine. Well, oh, the other scene that gagged me so hard. I'm Gina Davis. <laughs> that's that's her cameo. She's just she, once per episode. She just walks through, looks directly at the camera, and says, "I'm Gina Davis," and then walks and everyone just like at home just starts like, "Yay! Hooray!" What if she just had a? <laughs> what if she just? What if she just has a Netflix series where it's just like. <laughs> 
three second clips of her just walking through a room. I'm Gina Davis. You're welcome, Netflix. Take this idea. Could you like, imagine if they did that? Everyone would oh gag. Oh, Everyone would be like, that's incredible. Or like, it's just like five minutes of her doing something mundane. Like she's just like dusting a desk. And then just she's like, I'm Gina light. Davis. Similar to David light. Lynch. Like reporting the weather, yes. Gina Davis could do something banal every day, and everyone would just be like, "Hooray!" Gina Davis chugs a white claw. Like, <laughs> Gina Davis eats breakfast. Uh, uh, Gina Davis can't get that one eyelash on. Gina, Gina Davis and Susan Tran to just hang out. Gina Davis makes coffee in her underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, RJ. <laughs> Don't apologize. I, I feel like RJ would appreciate if Gina yeah, Davis like sure. jumped in on that gimmick. <laughs> yeah. If RJ's ever on a show, do we have to be in our underwear? I hope not. I'm not doing that. I don't want to be in my underwear around someone that looks better in their underwear than I do. I will like ever be in my underwear around RJ City. I will. We'll get him on the show, and you can be in your underwear with him. Yeah. yeah that's, that's... In fact, you could just have your own episode with him in your underwear. I think that probably would be a good idea. <laughs> Our no, I actually want to meet him. Good idea. Yeah, no, I, I was like, wait, are we just giving up the no, chance no, no, to no, meet no. RJ City? No, 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 I no. object. Yeah, no, he's. We'll do two episodes of him. We already have a plan. Great. Us in our underwear. <laughs> oh boy. Um, um, the other thing that gagged me, yeah. the other scene, um, was when all the wrestlers are complaining about how intense their training is, mm. and then they go to the showgirls training. Oh, and I was like, this bitch. is, I like seriously thought of like, this is when our, our wrestler friends come to the drag shows, yeah. and they're like, oh, like yeah. we actually- Casanova makes nobody was just like gagged. Yeah. Mm. Like they just need to be like, because, and like drag queens do the exact same thing, oh, where sure. they're like, they're like, fuck this wrestling shit. And, like. But like people get so stuck in their head about how hard their own style of performance is, and then mm -hmm. they go and look at another, and they're like, "Oh fuck!" Like that's just like even harder. Like, yeah. I actually really liked that the the dance teacher character. We didn't see a lot of her, but like she was really interesting. Yeah, that was a good character. The sort of jaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She's like, "This is just as what it is for a show. We're all audition again, but like, yeah, yeah. Now I'm teaching these kids." She had accepted it. She no. was very, she was a figure of grace. It was the entire plot of a chorus line in a two minute scene. Yeah, we don't need that fucking play. Uh, disagree. <sighs> I've never seen it. It's my favorite musical. That's really? Not, it's neither here nor there. It's I don't want to talk about it anymore. No. You I have to talk about Elizabeth Perkins. Who? The Ma Bash's mom. Oh. oh yeah. yeah. She, first of all, another, I mean, she should be as big as Gina Davis is. I'm Elizabeth Perkins. <laughs> mm, doesn't have the same zing to it. I'm Elizabeth Perkins. <laughs> I like that you're trying to do an Elizabeth Perkins impersonation, even though that's not a thing that can be done. No, <laughs> like, because she's just everything. Is she chameleonic? Like I just that? No, I just don't think that I would, no matter how good the impersonation was, I would never be like, oh, Elizabeth Perkins. <laughs> Like, <laughs> what if that was my Snatch game and they're like, who? <laughs> I mean, I guess technically you could do anything with it. We oh, can't. Elizabeth Perkins was the shit in the like 80s, like big. Was she on like Dynasty or something? No, no she was the. She was a movie star. Lead actress in Big. She was, she was oh, in, in Fried Big. Ring Tomatoes. She was in Weeds. She was in she Weeds. She was in Weeds? Yeah, she's Nancy's friend the who had the lesbian daughter. Fried Green Tomatoes. I don't remember. She was, she was a big. main character for most that. of the season. No she was in a Kevin she Bacon got movie. Called... She was the one with cancer? Yeah, they kidnapped her and took her to a foreign country at one point and, try, and tried to sell her She organs. was the one with cancer. Yes. She had blonde hair in that show? Sure, yeah, probably. I don't know. She was, Nan like, was Nancy's she... best friend who was super annoying. She aged a lot lately then. Yeah, yeah that old. show is like a 10 years old Yeah, probably. okay. All right, she's I didn't been around, connect this. She's been yeah. working since the 80s. Good for her, God bless. Yeah. God bless her. I just fucking love her. I was glad to see her around. I don't think this character gave her enough to do what she does. But that scene with her and Kate Nash. Really and good. Buying mm -hmm. clothes and Kate Nash is like. This is a trap. You don't know necessarily if Kate Nash is, what's her character in the show? I don't remember her. Darlene, Shirley, <laughs> sure. scientist. Anyways, uh, you think, well, they make her out to be sort of ditzy and dumb, mm -hmm. but in that moment, she's just like a, you realize she's just like, yeah, I just love your son. Yeah, like, it's yeah. really sweet. And like, whatever. Um, <laughs> Jordan also, when we were talking about how personality disordered mm. Ruth is, was like, 
Hey, hey, remember when they introduced an eating disorder subplot for five minutes and dropped it completely? What? Oh, oh. yeah. Oh. Betty Gilpin uh, throws up Random. once. What? Like, I, and I was like, no, I literally did not remember that until you brought it up. I did have a, they did a whole thing where they kept talking about, like, how big her ass is. And I'm like, we have seen 100% of her ass so many times. This actress is not, by any era's standards, large. Like, it's, it felt weird. Would she have been large in the 80s? No. Betty no. Gilpin? She's very... She's very fit. She's very thin. She well, has big tits, but yeah. she's, like, like... But, like... I mean, I get it that, like, body dysmorphia works that way, but... Right, sure. No, like, Ruth, I mean, and Ruth has a personality disorder, too. Yeah. But she says directly to Ruth a couple times, like, my ass is so huge, and Ruth is never, like, But that's it's true, not. that didn't go any further. Like, she just threw up that one episode. Yeah, yeah, and then and then she was like, "God, I are we gonna find out she was secret, secret, like secretly throwing?" I up? think they just forgot like, to like, like carry that plot. Yeah, her her through. plot became wanting to see her kids, and then wanting the power to buy her own things so she would have time to see her kids. Like it went from like body issues to like mommy issues. <laughs> I do think there was they maybe into, I don't I don't remember the chronology exactly, but it's possible they went for that turning point of like her talking to the dance teacher was like. She's like, I'm not going to get my body back, but I can spend more time with my kids. I wonder if that was supposed to be like a... But I don't remember if she was throwing up after that. She might have been throwing up after the dance teacher. To stay. I don't remember. It I was... just remember that I didn't remember it. Yeah, it was a really <laughs> random thing to throw in that they did not come back yeah. to. I bet eating disorders are pretty common in wrestling. Oh, I'm certain. Like, like probably pretty ubiquitous. Like, you've j I mean... All of these people just have to have their body uh, broadcast to an entire yeah. audience all the time. I, I wrote to... about it a little because a lot of like a lot of the big guys get told like you're fat all the time, and it's mm -hmm. like, and like then a lot of the small guys are like, they're like you're too small, you're not you're big like, enough, yeah. yeah, and it's like, you know, impossible beauty standards. Yeah, everyone's everyone's Nyla body's Rose wrong. is getting that a lot, like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think it's a cunt move that Betty Gilpin's character like was like. Look, there's this TV station for a cell, and my boyfriend's underselling them, and we're gonna swoop in and we're gonna get it. But also, in that moment, she's kind of taking advantage of Bash and what. Oh, he, definitely, and for he, sure. But she, he but she's getting him. what the fuck she wants. But he, and he fucks her over, so she's just so like fine. And I don't much. Know, she, like that's the. I think like she, it's really great to watch her learn how to use the power that she yeah, has. Yeah, like, yeah. they set up really smartly that, like, yeah, she is put at a disadvantage consistently, but she knows how to work the system. She's very smart. She's written very well. Very smart character. Yeah, exactly. Like, the character is smart, and she is smartly written both. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, a lot of shows fail at, like, making characters look smart, I feel like. Like, they just yeah. tell, they're just like, oh, this person is smart. But they they really, solved an equation. Yeah, but this is, like, her, like, this is, like, some Game of Thrones shit. It's true. It's, it's interesting, too, because it's, like, there's so much bullshit talk about, like, strong female characters mm. as, like, a thing. And, like, but, like, she literally is a physically strong and emotionally strong yeah. female character. One of the scenes, and this is from season two, and they were talking about this on the Colster Risa's podcast, is when they did the Me Too storyline, and we didn't do it a, a season two episode, so mm -hmm. I feel like I can go back to this. Yeah, but, go for it. Um, where instead of letting a douchebag male character do this Me Too, to, like, and they did that, like, you know, um, what's her name's character got sexually harassed, right? Or whatever. And Betty Gilpin's like, what the fuck did you do? This is what we do. This is our mm. business. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the business. And it was a female telling another female, this is just the way it is. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's how they felt back then. you for yeah. not. And still do. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Um, I'm right. holding But I feel like in the, now. In, the f in the final scene from this season, Betty Gilpin's trying to make up for it and be like, hey... You can be a director. You can do all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can be in charge of yeah. what you want to do. And still, she can't fucking take it. Yeah, I mean, it's... I do have even some confusion about what Ruth wants, and it's possible that Ruth doesn't know what Ruth wants. She wants whatever will ruin her life. Yeah, it's a... She doesn't really have, like, a, a steady motivation. Uh, not that people make the right... Like, not that people make sensible choices all the time. Like, people's choices don't make sense and don't have to, so... 
I mean, I think they made sense in the sense that she always chose the thing that would ruin yeah. life. <laughs> and there are people you meet in life who do that, and you're like, why do you keep doing that? Like, they don't what know either. What is wrong with you? Yeah, they don't. Even, like, Mark Maron's character ends up get, having the growth of Elise being like, hey, I'm just going to be very straightforward about exactly what I'm thinking and feeling about this yeah. situation. And, like, he, like, develops empathy for his daughter. Yeah. Which, like, you know, there is growth there. But he's also, like... Oh, the character's a nightmare person. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but, I like that character for some reason. Oh, he's... I, also very... Yeah, he's a very complex character, too. And another one where, like, the actor makes a huge difference. Sometimes like, I'm, like... I can't believe how straight good Mark this Barron complex is. in real life, though? <laughs> yeah, an artist. Yeah. No, the answer like is obviously his yes. character. Yeah, that's true. He is an artist who doesn't think he's ever done anything good in his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, his daughter comes through, and he actually has the wherewithal to be like, "Well, this is what I need to focus on." And it's like a very interesting combination of like immense jealousy, protectiveness, and mm -hmm. excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I let, like. Like you were saying about, like, are straight men this complex? Yeah, I like the answer the, is yes. Obviously. But, like, he also doesn't verbalize things complexly. Yeah, 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 Like, yeah, he yeah. makes very straightforward, direct statements about what he's thinking or feeling, and it might be a correct facet of what he's feeling, right, right. but he has a lot of subtext that he's constantly playing, because he, uh, he just, like, has one surface thing that he sticks with, which is, like, a very, like, embittered straight like, man oh, thing. Oh, I'm having a heart attack. I'm gonna be an asshole because that's what I usually am. Yeah. And take care of this myself. Yeah, but I mean, Mark Marin is doing a lot of heavy lifting to make that character yeah, like very watch, good acting. Because that's another one that, like, on the page is just a dick bag. Yeah. And he has to bring, even in when he's playing it, I'm like he well, mastered good, like, sad puppy dog eyes. Yeah. Uh, he's uh he's really killing it. Everyone's just doing great. I don't know how many times we can say it. <sighs> Um, everyone's really killing it on Glow. I see, you know who's, you know what character they're not killing it with, I feel like? Um, uh, the one that hooks up with the prostitute. Oh, I liked her. I thought she was good. I like her. I enjoy her. I feel like we're, we don't, we didn't get much with her character. She just wasn't the main the character this season. Yeah, I mean, Melrose is very much a comedic relief. She's, like, in the place where, like, the old biddies are. Like, she's just there to, like... We're approaching it, though, granted what happened with her prostitute boyfriend and Bash and... The, the old biddies don't get quite as much development. No, but I think that Melrose is used much more as a comic relief she's than like anything else. She's like a C else. character. Yeah, she's like thrown in as a garnish here and there. Yeah, yeah. And like she, ha she had enough of a plot. It's a lot of characters that they really balanced. Yeah. Like you never got too bored of anyone or any story. True. True. Like everything was like, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of characters in one show. Oh, a sure. Of character. And I will, I mean like, I thought after she like slept with that sex worker once that we would just like, <sighs> That Sorry. scene was really funny. <laughs> like I thought, yeah, I thought that we would, they would mistake, they would each mistake each other for wanting money, and then we would never see him again. Yeah, the and way so, they brought him back was actually. Funny. Yeah, it was a really smartly laid out plot, yeah. and she got to kick it off, even if she doesn't have like an ultimate check off. Yeah, she doesn't have like a payoff with that that we'll ever see off probably. Shigalo. <laughs> Sounds like makes nobody twenty forty. <laughs> Shigalo that you see in the first act <laughs> will be fucked in. The Third. It's true. Yeah. At the, at Have the, you ever like had like a gigolo in a first act of a play that like doesn't appear later? You know, well, it's like Midnight Cowboy. I never saw that. Me either. Well, we had to, I watched had to watch it in like three different film classes. Really? Mostly taught by straight men. Yeah. Weird. Straight men love Midnight Cowboy. Huh. I've never seen it. I haven't seen it. It's in about cruising, years. right? What is it about? Kind of, he turns into a prostitute and oh. a drug addict oh. uh, for moving from Texas, wants to be an actor, but it's a, not... Yeah. That was a good time. But it's also actor. like the uh, famous scene with Dustin Hoffman, like, slapping the cab and being like, I'm walking here, which was like a, a real moment, which is fun. Um, anyway. Yeah. I don't remember how we got on that. I'm Gina Davis. <laughs> we were just talking, we were talking about uh, male sex workers. Oh. Uh, we got to see this guy's dick. Yeah. So thanks for that. Sure. Thanks, uh, Glow, for showing us a dick for once. On television. Equal television. opportunity. Dudes should get their Not shit so out much too. equal. No, but I, we're get like it's it's a step in the right direction. I mean, that actor that plays Bash definitely touched some dick in those panties in that scene. It did appear that way. It did appear that way. Uh, listen, we're all just getting close together as a cast. Uh, this is a bonding. 
I'm sure that is I'm that sh- like what they say in like acting school? I didn't go to acting school. No, what I don't. Say? Say. I mean, what do they say? <laughs> like this is like a it's gonna be a bonding experience. Oh yeah, we've done yeah. For sure. No, I mean <laughs> honestly, no, honestly, for like for a moment like that, they were I probably approach it very clinically and like yeah, of course you have to choreograph very carefully whatever totally. you do, and you have to get consent from everyone. Yeah, of course, of course. Because this is a workplace, and that's like a, a well, he's probably female made underwear under that underwear. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So it's tr- but still, like they would have to go over. I I'm like, well, I want to method this, so can you not wear those? <laughs> oh my god, that's, that's wildly unprofessional. <laughs> there's you a, there's a story that Fran Drescher, I think it was Fran Drescher, told about uh, working with Robin Williams. I don't know what this was, but he accidentally popped a boner when they were in a scene together. <laughs> when were they in a movie together? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I can't look it up. I'm recording on my phone right now. I I don't recall. I think it was those two. I see. It sounds very unlikely. I don't know. It sounds likely to me. I think it sounds. Fran funny. Drescher and Robin Williams. They must have crossed paths at some point. Yeah. In a mo- in a scene where Robin Williams would be getting a boner. Yeah. Sure. Why not? We've seen him with his shirt off in a lot of movies. He's I don't very think very hairy that... and has very pink nipples. I have... like Alec Baldwin. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. I'm Gina Davis. <laughs> I've worked with Alec Baldwin. Um, I think we're out of ideas here. Yeah, um, listen, thank you to Gina Davis specifically. And, and Gina Davis alone, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and anyone else who is subscribing to our Patreon for making this show uh, work. Yeah, fine, thank them too, but mostly Gina Davis. Um, if, what if our credits are just like, Gina, Gina Davis, Davis, Gina, Gina, Davis, Davis, Gina, Davis, Gina Davis, Gina Davis, Gina Davis, Gina Davis, Gina Davis. Gina Davis. <laughs> yeah. People wouldn't even be mad, they wouldn't even be like, my name wasn't it. They'd be like, oh, Gina Davis, yeah. I don't know. Gina Davis might be like, I'd like to publicly distance myself from this show. <laughs> she wouldn't. I would re- release a statement She'd like, be like, oh, you boys. <laughs> Gina, I loved you in that show where you played the president. I'm so sorry that got canceled. <gasps> I was so mad when that got canceled. It was really it was good. So good, Commander in Chief. Yeah, she played the first female president. I kind of wanted to watch that. It's good. I mean, I remember like it's Gina Davis. She could just get up on the pulpit I would, and say, "I'm Gina Davis." I'm Commander in Chief. I would Commander vote for Chief Gina Davis. I would vote for Gina Davis in this next election. Oh my God! I she would have better policies than most. She's very goons. politically active. Though I actually, she's, she's a Democrat, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I want to go back and watch Commander in Chief now and see what the po- like, what were the politics of this president? I'm, I'm Gina Davis. That's her whole policy situation. <laughs> I she just walks in. She just walks into four like foreign dignitaries, and she's like, "I'm, I'm Gina, Gina Davis. Davis," and they're like I signing want, trees. Oh, what do you need? <laughs> <laughs> I want um, a track a la "Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall," but "Hello, I'm Gina Davis." Do I don't think she that? says hello. I think Gina Davis she just says, says I'm she Gina just Davis. Proclaims. She just proclaims. She, you can greet her, but she will not greet you. Remember She's her Gina Davis. Earth Girls Are Easy? I never saw that either. Oh. I really want to watch. It's been on my Damon Wayans, forever. Jim Carrey, and someone else. Jeff played, Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum played Aliens. I don't know. That sounds really it's real, funny. I'm, I'm surprised we've never seen a drama. It's also a musical. Isn't oh, it? never mind. Yeah. I don't Earth want to see this easy. anymore. Um... We were ending, and I think we still should. Yeah, uh, rate, review, subscribe, as the children say. Listen to the children, but don't listen to the children. They're very stupid. Bye!